A cap measure of agreement is how two measures are similar. Now this data here might look a bit like being in the matrix, but actually it's quite simple. We've got a um, whole load of data, and these are measurements, and it's either zero, which is false, and one, which is true. Now if you look over here, we've got um, 10K data, and that's a false, false, true, false, true. We zoom all the way over here. We've got the same thing, which is false, true, false, false, true. And that's R2084. Over here, it's R1084. So it's really similar comparable data. It's two reviewers on the same thing. So I want to see what agreement is there between these two reviewers. So we're going to use the Kappa measure of agreement. It's really simple to do. Go to Analyze, Descriptives, and Cross Tabs. I've already populated it here. So in rows, we put reviewer one, in columns, reviewer two. Now my data, as I said, looks quite complex. It's just a lot of data. So we could run this on multiple, like um, 84H, 10K, or and 84H, 20K. It doesn't matter what we're looking at here. So what do we have to add in here? Well, go to statistics and we choose Kappa. That's the one we really care about. And then we go to cells and we want rows, columns, and total percentages and observed counts. That's everything. We can click OK. And out comes our results. So the first thing we want to look at is the N value here. It's 505. That's how many people we've got in a data set. It's a lot of data these two reviewers are working on. Now, I don't do anything else with that top one. I go to the bottom and I look for the value of kappa, which is minus 0.23. And I look for the significance. Now, the significance in this case is 0.604. That's very non significant. If that was 0 0.05 and below, I would say, hmm, there's some agreement, but there's no significance. So I'm going to say that means no agreement between the two. These two people are agreeing or um, categorizing the data as false and true in a very random way. There's no real agreement. They're completely different. Um, so we'll look at that. Now, if you were to get a significant outcome, you need to interpret the cap of value. Now, uh, there's a whole lot of different things on how you interpret this, but you could say that moderate agreement is 0.5 and above. Good agreement is 0.7 and above, and very good agreement is 0.8 and above. As you can see, we're really low down, nowhere even near moderate agreement at 0.5. So that really ties in with our non-significance. What else can you pull out of this? Well, there's two terms you'd think about, which is specificity and sensitivity. Now, sensitivity is um, the proportion of cases where the condition is um, identified correctly. So in our case, it is true and true. Now, the data really is true. Did we predict it to be true? And the other one is specificity, which is the complete opposite. Did we think it was false and it was false? So let's look at the first one here. We hollowed the data in the table. We want this um, third row of the true. So um, percent within 20K. And we say true, true, 38.6. So we've got a sensitivity of 38.6. We can detect the true value 38.6 of the time. And the reverse of that is with um, false. Go down to third again. So 20 versus 20K, 59.1. So our specificity, which is... Um, Portion of cases where it's classified that negative is that way. So we are higher, we're better at predicting if something is false, the negative, than we are at the positive, but both of them are pretty rubbish and there's no real level of agreement between the two reviewers.